Disney Princess, Beauty and the Beast. One cold night, an old beggar woman knocked on the door of a beautiful castle. She offered a young prince a rose in return for shelter. He took one look at the woman's rags and sent her away. But the old woman was actually a beautiful enchantress in disguise. She cast a spell on all who lived in the castle and turned the prince into a hideous beast. With him, she left an enchanted mirror and a rose, which would bloom until his 21st birthday. If he could learn to love and be loved before the last petal fell, the spell would be broken. If not, he would be a beast forever. In a nearby village, a beautiful girl named Belle had just borrowed a book from the bookshop. It's my favorite, Belle told the bookseller. Far off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, a prince in disguise. Like the people in her books, Belle longed for adventure and romance. Gaston, a handsome hunter, wanted to make Belle his wife. But Belle had bigger dreams. Gaston snatched the book out of her hands. Belle, it's about time you got your head out of those books and paid attention to more important things, like me, he said, tossing her book in the mud. Suddenly, a loud boom came from the cottage where Belle lived with her father, Maurice. Belle hurried home to see if he was okay. Maurice was all right, but something was bothering Belle. I'm not sure I fit in here, she told him. There's no one I can really talk to. Don't you worry, he assured her, because this invention's going to be the start of a new life for us. Then, with the tightening of one last screw, the machine roared to life, and Maurice soon left for the fair with the family horse, Philippe. When they reached a fork in the road, Maurice had Philippe take a shortcut. But after a while, it started to get dark, and a gloomy mist filled the air. Tree branches towered over their heads as wolves howled in the distance. This can't be right, Maurice said. Without warning, a swarm of bats flew out from a tree and scared Philippe. The poor horse threw Maurice and bolted, leaving him alone in the forest. A pack of hungry wolves growled at Maurice from the darkness. He ran away, but lost his balance and stumbled down a hill. When he looked up, the wolves had him cornered by a gate. Help! He cried, shaking the bars of the gate. Is someone there? Just then, the gate creaked open, so he quickly slipped through. He made his way to a castle he saw in the distance. Cautiously, he opened the front door. Inside, the castle was very dark, so he picked up a candelabrum to help him see. Suddenly, the candelabrum started to talk. A nearby mantel clock started to talk, too. The objects were enchanted. Come warm yourself by the fire, suggested Lumiere, the candelabrum. Cogsworth, the mantel clock, did not think that was a good idea. Suddenly, a hideous beast stormed in, growling from the shadows of the room. So, you've come to stare at the beast, have you? He said, glaring at the intruder. Please, I meant no harm, said Maurice. He was so scared he could barely speak. I just need a place to stay. But the beast wouldn't listen. Roaring angrily, he grabbed Maurice and locked him in the castle tower. Back in the village, Gaston arranged to marry Belle outside her cottage. There was only one problem. He hadn't proposed yet. He confidently knocked on Belle's door, walked in, kicked off his muddy boots, and started to talk about the future. Their future. Belle knew where that was going. So when he leaned in to kiss her, she opened the door. Gaston tumbled out of her cottage and landed in a pool of mud. Her answer was no.
Belle couldn't believe Gaston had proposed. He didn't understand her at all. Once she was certain he was gone, Belle went for a walk in the hills to clear her head. When Philippe ran across the field toward Belle, her father was nowhere to be seen. Where's Papa? You have to take me to him, she said. Philippe took Belle straight to the gates of the castle. There she found her father's hat. She knew she was at the right place. Cautiously, she entered the gates and went inside the castle. Papa, she asked, are you here? But no one replied. She wandered through dark corridors and long hallways. Finally, she came to a staircase and walked up the steps. When she reached the top of the stairs, Belle found her father. You must go, now, he warned her. There wasn't enough time to explain. Suddenly, the beast appeared from the shadows. He's my prisoner, he told her. Please, let my father go. Take me instead, said Belle. The beast agreed and sent Maurice back to the village. At the village tavern, Maurice rushed in, upset about the ferocious beast. He told Gaston and the villagers he needed their help to rescue Belle. But everyone thought he was crazy. We'll help you out, said Gaston. Then they threw Maurice out into the snow. Once Maurice was gone... Gaston thought of a new plan to make Belle marry him. At the castle, the beast showed Belle to her new room. He explained she could go anywhere, except for the West Wing. When she asked why, he lost his temper. Belle didn't ask the beast any more questions after that. She even refused to eat dinner with him that night. I've lost my father, my dreams, everything, cried Belle, as the objects in her room tried to comfort her. Cheer up, child. It'll turn out all right in the end, an enchanted teapot told her. You'll see. The enchanted objects were excited to meet Belle. They thought she could be the one to finally break the spell. So, later that night, When Belle wandered into the kitchen, they whipped up a delicious meal for her. Be our guest, they sang, trying their best to make her feel welcome. After dinner, Belle couldn't possibly think of sleeping. It was her first time in an enchanted castle, so Cogsworth gave her a tour. But when he wasn't looking... Belle climbed the steps to the forbidden West Wing. At the end of a hallway, she found herself in a dark room. A torn portrait of a handsome man hung on the wall. Nearby, a glowing rose wilted in a glass case. Belle reached to touch the rose, but the beast stormed out from the shadows. Do you realize what you could have done? He growled growing angrier with every word. Get out, he yelled. Terrified, Belle fled the castle with Philippe. Belle rode through the dark forest as fast as she could toward the village. But something was wrong, and Philippe skidded to a stop. Wolves emerged from the trees and surrounded them. Philippe reared up in terror, sending Belle into the snow. Just as a wolf lunged at Belle, a powerful claw reached out and saved her. It was the beast. He stood over Belle, ready to protect her at any cost. The wolves attacked, but the beast fought them off. He was badly injured. Looking at Belle with sorry eyes, he collapsed into the snow. Belle knew she couldn't leave him there. So with Philippe's help, they took the beast back to the castle. Meanwhile, Gaston plotted his next move. Everyone knows her father's a lunatic, Gaston began. He also knew Belle would do anything to protect her father. So unless Belle agreed to marry him, 
Gaston would have Maurice thrown into an insane asylum. At the castle, Belle cleaned the beast's wounds. It was not an easy task. That hurts, he complained. Well, you should learn to control your temper, she replied. The beast was quiet. He knew Belle was right. By the way, thank you for saving my life, Belle said gently. The beast could not believe his ears. No one had ever thanked him before. After that night, something changed inside the beast. Knowing how much his new friend loved books, the beast showed Belle the castle's impressive library. It's wonderful, she said. She was surprised by his kindness. As the days passed, the beast tried to behave like a gentleman at the dinner table. He and Belle even fed little birds outside the castle together and had a snowball fight. As Belle and the beast read together by the fire one night, the enchanted objects could not contain their excitement. They were certain that Belle was the girl to break the spell. But the objects knew that the last rose petal would soon fall, so they prepared a romantic dinner for Belle and the beast. And when the time is right, Lumiere told the beast, you confess your love. Dressed in their finest clothes, Belle and the Beast enjoyed a splendid feast together and shared a dance in the ballroom, looking deeply into each other's eyes. Belle, are you happy here? The Beast asked when they finished dancing. Yes, she said, looking away. Even though she was happy, she missed her father dearly and wanted to see him again. So the beast handed Belle the enchanted mirror. He explained it would show her anything she wished to see. She asked to see her father. He suddenly appeared in the mirror, but he was sick and lost in the woods. You must go to him, said the beast. He hadn't told Belle that he loved her, but he cared so much that he let her go. Taking the mirror with her, Belle rushed back home. The beast was heartbroken. Belle found her father and brought him back to the cottage. He was surprised that the beast had been kind enough to let her go. Suddenly, someone knocked on the cottage door. The townspeople had come to take her father away. They thought Maurice was crazy for believing in a ferocious beast. Gaston grabbed Belle's arm. I might be able to clear up this little misunderstanding if you marry me, he said. Never, Belle cried out. My father's not crazy. I can prove it. She grabbed the enchanted mirror and showed the beast to the villagers. He's really kind and gentle, she told them. He's my friend, but no one would listen. We'll rid the village of this beast, Gaston said. Then Gaston and the villagers locked Belle and Maurice in the cottage and went to find the beast. Belle and her father managed to escape and rushed to the castle. They saw Gaston on the roof attacking the beast, who was too sad to defend himself. What's the matter, beast? said Gaston. Too kind and gentle to fight back? Belle begged Gaston to stop, but he ignored her and stabbed the beast in the back. As the beast roared in pain, Gaston slipped and fell off the roof, never to be seen again. The beast was badly injured. At least I got to see you one last time, he said, bringing his paw to Belle's cheek. Then he closed his eyes and sank to the ground. No! Please don't leave me, cried Belle. I love you. Inside the castle, the enchanted objects watched as the last rose petal fell. It was too late to break the spell. But then, magical streaks of light began to fill the sky. The beast turned back into a prince, and the enchanted objects returned to their human forms. 
the spell was broken. Belle, it's me, said the handsome prince who stood before her. Looking into his eyes, Belle knew it was him, and they shared their first kiss. It was then that Belle knew her dreams of adventure and romance had all come true.